Last November, back in 2022, we started season three of Vault Hunters. Yes, over on the SMP. Meaning now it has been over 11 months since we started. And I've live streamed all of this over on Twitch. And throughout that journey, I've had a lot of fun. So many fun co-op vaults. Uh, and it's been an absolute blast to play. Going from level zero all the way now up to level 100. And today I want to show you what it's like to be level 100 in Vault Hunters season three. Now I'm Chosen Architect and this is Vault Hunters. Now with almost 31 days worth of playtime, you'd probably think that I have a little bit of experience playing this so far. And if you thought that, you'd be absolutely wrong because I'm still learning new things all the time and there's so much that has been changed over this year. Now, if you'd like to see those changes, be sure to check out my second channel, Chosen Live. Of course, I'm gonna have it linked down in the description below, but you can always find it linked on my main channel page as the recommended channels down at the bottom. And uh, over there, you are going to see every single stream day posted on there and thumbnailed all of that for your viewing pleasure. At this point, over 125 days worth. And awesome news, as the time of this recording, if you are currently watching as it's been posted, on Monday, on Monday, October 16th, 2023, at 1 p.m. Central Standard Time, we are gonna be doing the final vault of Vault Hunters Season 3 SMP. Now, what exactly do I want to show you? Well, I do want to show off my base, but I also want to show you what it's like to be level 100, basically the highest level at the moment in Vault Hunters Season 3. And I want to show you what is it like to be level 100 and run a vault. But I also want to show you what has happened over the last year of building a base in Vault Hunters as well. So now let's start off with how do I actually start to run a vault at this level? Now, even if I want to go in here, I have to first make a crystal. And this is something that has changed. Before we would have to hand toss or figure out a method to somehow toss items into this vault altar. But throughout the season, later on, we ended up getting this altar conduit, which basically links to your refined storage system, or it can also link to your applied energistics system. What it allows it to do is then pull items that uh, are required out of your refined storage system. And once it's clicked, in this case, I do have a modular router that is clicking it on here. You'll see the items are requested and then the items are pulled from the refined storage system, making automation of your crystals pretty effortless. And it is very, very handy. So all of this gets sent to it. And then once it's done, I have a little bit of redstone going on down here. It's being sent to redstone signal with a timer. And then when it's done, this modular router picks up the crystal, gets dropped on the ground, and then it all gets sent to this barrel. And where you can see, I have some level 100 crystals. Now from there, I have several options in order to sort of manipulate this crystal. I can turn it into a cake vault, which is basically a hunt for a cake inside of the vault. Then we have a seal of the hunter, which is a scavenger hunt. Basically, you're given at the top of your bar, you're given some items that you need to try and find, and they're going to be contained in certain crates. Then we also have seal of the executioner, which is going to be find monoliths. And then inside of those monoliths, once clicked, some monsters will spawn and you'll need to kill off all of those monsters. They are incredibly tanky. And then you have my favorite, which is elixir rush. This is where you run through and certain things and actions that you do inside the vault will have certain values associated to them. And you'll have to figure out what those values are and how high certain things are. And then you're going to need to hunt for those objectives that are the highest to build up your elixir. And then once you have enough, you need to turn in your elixir. It's a pretty fun objective. Now, there are two others being an architect vault, which is quite complicated to actually set up. And believe it or not, I didn't run very many of them. Um, and then we also have monolith vaults and monolith vaults are what you're going to most likely encounter early on in your vault hunters career. Once you're at this level, though, you don't really see too much of that. Now, I do want to show off the executioner seal because I think this one is going to best demonstrate my current build set. So speaking of build set, let's go ahead and kind of see what this is like 
inside the vaults. And then after the vault, I will show you my exact build that I'm running. Now to get into my vault, all I have to do is place my crystal and we do have an angel block here, which is giving me create a flight in my base. Um, so I am using a pacifist brew and this particular brew has a uh, spirit totem on it. And spirit totem is going to allow me to get regeneration. It's pretty cool. Basically a potion that allows me to use a skill. Let's activate our portal and just hop in. I don't think there's anything we need to worry about. Hopping in, I should be more than prepared for this vault. So of course our theme is going to be very random and I'm missing an ability in the top right that I have not enacted. And that is Smite Archon, which is one of the things that I'm running. And with this ability, I don't really need an ax or a sword or anything. The, uh, the main reason I am holding this is I think this does grant us a little bit of extra damage towards those specific mobs. But outside of that, we really don't need to do anything. Now, normally I have been running for objectives and that's perfectly fine. We walk over here and we want to clear out this objective. Well, at this point, at moment, <laughs> as you see, I don't really have to do much to them uh, to be able to kill these mobs and of course take the loot. I just need to walk into them. And it is quite, yeah, I just stand here basically. And I can just keep healing myself and I'm good. But there are other strategies that I have found that uh, make this a lot easier. Um, and then, yeah, I would just run around. Now, I do have triple jump because I have a couple of things that I'm running that are right here. So we have up in this slot, we have a spell book and a prismatic feather. This is giving me the triple jump and the spell book is allowing my AP power, which is my ability power, um, which is something that was new that was introduced. And uh, it basically allows me to uh, get 50% more of the ability power that my gear stats are set to. This can all be kind of confusing, but uh, once you're this far into the pack, you're really not going to be worried too much about all of that details. At that point, you really just wanna start focusing on what route you're going to be going. Are you gonna be going the route where you're using a weapon and you're wanting to try and deal as much weapon damage as possible? Or do you want to go the route where you want to deal as much AP damage as possible? And in my particular case, I have chose AP power after doing a bit of testing. But of course, both routes are definitely viable. But yeah, I'm pretty much a, what, what, you, what would you call it? A lightning rod? Because <laughs> I can stand here and all of the mobs are gonzo. It's super powerful. I'm dealing tons and tons of damage. And this is far from the most powerful parts of this build. Now, at this level, I'm not super concerned about looting every chest. I really just want to complete the objective, so that way I can maximize the amount of vaults I run and the completions that I do, because each completion crate is going to have a chance of me obtaining an artifact, which is essentially what we need to be shooting for. I need to be shooting for trying my best to get 25 of the artifacts, 25 unique artifacts, in fact. Now, I've used my ability to be able to locate one of these obelisks. And uh, it's, in a, it's in a pretty tight spot. This would be relatively challenging in order to, uh, to get my hands on, but I think we'll be just fine. So let's go ahead and use my past this brew. I'm gonna show you one method that I use for clearing these out. Um, so I'll activate it. They're all going to spawn like so. And if sometimes they get trapped inside of a POI, I would like to clear the POI out. But there we go, they're all out. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to pop them and then I just need to walk into them. And now they are all dead. It happened in a blink of an eye, I know. But this is far from the most powerful way of taking them out. Now wouldn't you know it, while I'm looking for another obelisk, I do find an Omega room and this Omega room is full of coins. This is a coin Omega room and coins have been pretty important throughout my adventure in Vault Hunters. You need tons of gold for a lot of different things, and this makes it incredibly nice. You can just farm all the gold you want. I mean, at this point, I'm currently like sharing gold with other people. I have just too much of it. So up here is a perfect example of an obelisk that will make great use of another and powerful skill. So all I need to do is get them into sort of a central location, like this corridor. And then I activate Storm Arrow. 
And from Storm Arrow, you can see they just get just completely deleted. And that's without even using Taunt, which does increase my AP power even more. So they're basically being hit with close to 1700 damage per shot. It's quite a lot. So nice. Here is our final objective. And the, the reality, in reality, the goal is to try and do this as fast as possible with my current level in mind, because that's the most important metric right now. Not experience, just time, and trying to get this done as quick as possible. Because the, the sooner I get it done, the sooner I get myself a completion crate, and the sooner we can complete our artifact puzzle. It's pretty cool. So once this timer runs down, we will be teleported back to our portal. And yes, the stats don't look crazy here. Uh, and it's good for, for good reason. We didn't really break any chests and we don't need experience because we don't get any of this experience after level 100. Now, of course, prior to this, my goal was to kill as many mobs as possible and to loot as many chests, trying to average close to 300 plus chests every run. And that granted quite a bit of experience. And that was the way of getting up to level 100. But once we do this, we get ourselves a boss crate. And this is where we have a chance of getting an artifact. It'd be really cool if I got one. The chances are pretty slim and none to be able to get them. But I do have quite a few artifacts. If we go to the shopping district, I can show you here. This is our current artifact standings. So at the moment, with the people who are still currently coming back for the end game, we have Pete... Uh, who has been working on it. Pete, I think at, at like level 50, uh, stopped sort of playing, but has now come back. And then we have uh, Captain Sparkles. And then we have H-Bomb. And then the Harry, or Barry, um, which looks like gathered a few more. And then this is where I'm currently standing because I did a couple of streams where I've gotten like eight artifacts in the last two streams from doing completion vaults the way that I was just doing them. Uh, and then you have, uh, of course, Tango Frags. And then this looks empty, but behind it, I guarantee, is a full completed. Of course, Iskal has probably completed the whole thing and uh, has it exactly solved in everything. <laughs> but that just would totally make sense. Um, but yes, this has been our shopping district. This is just another awesome place to show off. Um, this has been so fun. <laughs> this is my little area that I uh, I created. Of course, we got uh, the Sheep Skates Emporium. Share it with your friends, which... If you purchase anything at my shop, you can feel free to take some wool. Uh, yes, this was very, very fun to set up all of these little graphics and everything for all of the things for sale. I was the fisherman on the server, even though in my statistics, it shows I never caught a single fish. Oh, it's quite good. Quite, quite good. And uh, was this, did, did I change this to gold? Tropical fish? I think it's just a little bit more rare. But uh, yeah, I love this. The grass patch. Iskal can't take this away. <laughs> There's just so many like random bits and bobs that uh, has been super fun. I made a, uh, a, a, a poisonous potato farm. And uh, yes, I have tons of poisonous potatoes all over the place for sell for a pog. Because I just thought that was fitting at that current point. Yes, it's just so much cool stuff. This is Barry's little area. And I, I, I love it. It's, it's adorable. And it also fits... Uh, with his whole base theme. There's a lot of cool bases on this server. So now that I've shown you pretty much what it's like in order to run a vault, let me show you my current gear and build set. Now let's first take a look at my current gear and what I'm actively using inside the vaults. Because there's been a lot of changes since the last time you might have seen Vault Hunters. I'm currently using a very interesting AP build and I do have a very lucky piece here. This is a legendary increased ability power with a really high ability power gear. Now, not all these pieces are maxed out, but I think these uh, legendary pieces really help. Uh, so this is a pretty important part of this whole build, having this increased percentage of ability power, uh, which amplifies even more with uh, our spell book that we currently have that, we're, that I showed earlier. So with all of this, we have this piece of gear, which you can go ahead and take a look. The uh, the mana regen is very helpful. All these other stats are not as super important, but poison avoidance is very nice to have on there because that's the probably the worst thing in the vault is getting poisoned. Um, and then we have another set. Ability power is not currently fully maxed out, but the mana regen is nice and we get a little extra bonus to Stonefall. Um, the AP is still rather high, and the ability power is near max that you can roll on a piece of gear. 
And uh, then we have this one, which the ability power isn't maxed out, but we do have that legendary uh, mana regen, which is uh, phenomenal. And then we also have this mother of a legendary, which is giving us 162 mana regen and has rolled the 43 almost max ability power on this and also gives us health. That's why I have so much health. Now, with all of that, we also compound everything with the wand. This is an Omega wand that has increased ability power on it as well. Also some cooldown reduction and some increased area of effect, which allows some of my other spells to currently work. And that's kind of what we're running is a spell build. That's why I don't really need to use a weapon. Uh, and I'm maxed with nearly a maxed out roll on ability power on that. Now over here, if I do hold this, uh, we do give 100% undead damage, 100%, uh, almost 100% uh, Illager damage, and then Nether damage to Nether mobs is set to 40. A little bit of attack speed and stuff, but I do not really use this. And then we have a couple of tools that I use. This is my main tool for breaking uh, most containers outside of wooden chests. This is for wooden chests for the most part. And then this is for clearing out ore veins. Uh, it's very nice for clearing out ore veins. And then I've, I have my pacifist brew uh, that heals me for 10 points and then summons that spirit totem, which is more mana regen when I need it. Some of these other things you see, this is a junk identifier. Basically, whenever I pick up junk with my magnet, which I didn't even go over, this is my current magnet. Uh, whenever I pick up things with my magnet and they go into my bag, uh, it basically voids off certain things. So over here is where I manage all of my stuff. And this is where I can say, if it's in here, then, and I pick it up in the vault, it gets deleted. So there's a ton of items in there. This was very expensive to craft and uh, was definitely worth it because there's nothing worse than coming back to your base with tons of junk. Now, let's talk about stats and abilities. So currently at my standing, if I hold my actual weapon, uh, we can see all of my stats. So my defense is not super high, but we'll talk about that in a second. Uh, and my health and damage is, is great. But over here, we have the ability power set to 635 on our ability power. That is insanely high and is very nice. It's what's nearly insta-killing everything with our abilities. Uh, healing is pretty high. And then over here, we have 640 mana regen, which is definitely needed as well. All of this adds up and we have a pretty potent build inside of the vaults. Now over here, this is where I get into these skills. So I'm running eight in Nova and Nova is great, especially when it is mixed with taunt. So if you taunt with Nova, you're going to get a bonus um, and it's going to give them a vulnerability that uh, increases by 10% uh, damage taken to that mob by 10%. And it stacks, it goes up to eight over here on this particular level. Uh, so that in basically gives them a debuff and then you hit hit them with the Nova and it's almost guaranteed to insta kill them uh, and for most things. But this also helps with other AP stuff such as our Archon. Now I do have one in Vein Miner because I don't like to over Vein Mine. Uh, and I never really decided to go higher than one because I think mining eight things at a time is more than enough. Then I have maxed out Dash because we need a way to move around. And Dash is fantastic. Maxed out Heal because heals are super important as well. And then maxed out Hunter, which is goes up to level eight. So that way we can find specific objectives that we can reset throughout each vault. Now, this is where everything comes into play. Smite, but not just Smite normal, Smite Archon. So when something technically gets in, gets close enough to me, I will shock them and I will hit them with a bolt. Now this bolt does cost mana and to keep this running costs mana. But if you have enough mana regen, it's sustainable. This is incredibly powerful, and this is a fantastic, fantastic little ability if you have the stats to run it. And there's the taunt again, and then with Stonefall prevents me from taking fall damage. If I time it just right when I land, I will take fall damage, but I do have a plus one on here, which this is my current uh, with that plus one. Gives me a little bit of time for error instead of using a water bucket throughout the entire vault, which is what I did for most of the vault. Then we have Mana Shield. Mana Shield is why I can run my defense pretty low. So I don't have to worry so much about my defense stat. I can just run a couple in Mana Shield, keep it always active, 
And yes, when I do take damage, it is going to take some of my mana, which can be frustrating at times, but it is super worth it so you just don't get completely wrecked from one hit shots and things like that. We absorb 30% of overall damage through mana shield, which is phenomenal. And then, which is what I added last, Storm Arrow. Storm Arrow is so powerful. 275 AP percent damage each shot, and uh, it lasts for 14 seconds, and every 0.3 seconds, a lightning bolt will strike down if an enemy is near. It's very, very powerful, and I absolutely love this. And uh, that right there is my main build. Now, my talent that I am using is maxed out speed, maxed out haste, because we want to be able to mine and run as fast as possible. My intelligence is mass, uh, maxed out, which increases our ability power innately by up to 12. That is even more powerful. Uh, and then we have witchery. And so we'll gain extra. This was sort of an extra thing I added. Uh, this will let us gain a little bit more souls, which uh, allows us to purchase things. And then sorcery. Whenever our health is uh, at max, we get bonus mana regeneration. This is pretty useful for um, getting around the vault and uh, not worrying about our mana consumption. And then stone skin is an absolute must. The worst thing about vault hunters is getting knocked around with bricks and other items. Uh, so you want to be able to stand your ground and not get knocked around. So if you're at least 80% of your health, you won't get knocked around as much. And that is about as simple as this build gets. Uh, now some other things, some expertise, which was a new thing that was added. Uh, the expertise I'm running maxed out infuser. Uh, this allows us to be able to craft crystals better along with mythic allows us to craft crystals better. Tinkerer is pretty cool. This allows us to not have a chance of not consuming a use on our trinket, which was those two things that I showed you, which was that feather and the spell book. Um, and then I have unbreaking, which I think is a must with this build. You do need as much unbreaking as possible. So your gear doesn't break on you as much. And then jeweler allows me to cut jewels and make better tools. Angel was the last stat that I put in because I figured at this point, uh, the angel would be the only thing I would really want. And this allows me to fly within a 64 block radius of that block I showed you earlier, the angel block. And then fortunate allows me to get extra fortune whenever I fortune my uh, blocks at my base. And uh, that gives us basically fortune five. And then marketer, which allows, uh, allows us at least one reroll on our market. Pretty cool. And then over here is all of the mobs or mods that I have unlocked up to this point. It does take a lot, a lot of vaults to run in order to fully unlock everything, but I do have a ton of stuff unlocked and I wish I honestly knew how many points overall we had put into everything. This is an insane build, <laughs> as you see. Just so much damage coming from all of these different things. And it has been an absolute blast. And I cannot wait for that final vault. Now, without further ado, let me go ahead and show you all of the fun and cool things that I've built over this season. Oh, one quick thing I almost forgot. I forgot to show you this tab, which is the vault stat tab. I have ran a total of 543 vaults. Uh, 260 of them have been completed. 263 of them have been survived, which means that I made it through but didn't complete the objective and then failed, which is 20, meaning I potentially died inside of the vaults uh, due to one reason or another. There was a lot of different ways that we died early on. And yes, all of these other stats are the experience, mobs unalived, and all of that stuff that I have done throughout. It has been quite a journey. Now, back to the cool builds. Now, this is where it all started. Yes, this magnificent build where it over time became the most laggy thing that I had built uh, for one reason or another. I think mostly they create stuff potentially. Uh, but yes, this was my cozy abode that we used for the longest of time, even giving this nice little uh, mailbox. Whenever I receive a item in the mail, mail time, it says loose kadoo, loose kadoo and uh, raises and starts waving at us. This was a fun little thing that I had set up. Um, and we had a ways of sending packages to everybody, which was uh, another little fun thing. Uh, but one of the first thing I built was a iron golem farm and don't look at it too closely because it is one block off. That still is running to this day. 
let's look in here and you'll see I did have my 30th birthday while streaming this, which was a, a very fun thing. We have our little TV, but it's also our demagnetizer and then a jute box with a pancake in it. Tons of little like artifacts all throughout this entire build. This is my kitchen that I lived in for the longest of time where we did most of our crafting of just about everything was done here. So many old pieces of gear. I think this was my first Omega that is on the wall here. Yeah, enter at your own risk. <laughs> There's just so many random artifacts from this. Uh, this is my, uh, my IO for my create automation. So I send items here and the items pop back over here and then get sent into the refined storage, which was a pretty fun thing to set up. Uh, staying on this first floor, if I go ahead and head back here, this is where we originally had kept tons of our gear because this was our forging area that had some automation for our uh, pulverizer and our furnace that I still use uh, to this day. We back here some more farms, some random things that I ran early on just so I can make crystals more efficiently. This is all set over this massive, massive little valley. And uh, it's just a, a, it was just a beautiful thing that I built and I loved it so much. Now moving upstairs, all of this has stuff hidden behind it, but I thought it was it was hidden just oh so well, oh so well for all of this. And uh, all of the interior I finished out. There's even a little functional bathroom that has the ability for you to, you know, to, to wipe after, uh, after using the bathroom and then making sure you wash your hands over here uh, with a functional shower and everything. <laughs> uh, this is the game room. So the nice little gaming loft with a poker table and uh, some dartboards and uh, one of the earlier episodes <laughs> where we ended up taking one of these guys out and then a wall heater. Yeah, cause you, you can't get, it gets toasty. Upstairs is the bedroom. And uh, yeah, this was just a fun build. I did have my original storage up here early on. So all of our storage was handled up there. And uh, this brings you over to my conveyor belt, which inevitably led you to this portal. So I would take the conveyor belt, but I do want to drop off here first and talk about the B automation. Yeah, this is just a very simple B automation. Oh, uh, let's not. Yeah, I have Archon on. Well, rip B. Oh no, I just, I can't believe that happened. Oh, poor B. <laughs> yeah, Archon's pretty bad and has killed multiple doggos. Um, we'll talk about that later. But yes, this is where that uh, automation, I never finished out these areas. These were uh, kind of tough things, but here's all of the automations for the, the all the three tasks that this does. Haunting, washing, and uh, blasting from the create mod. Uh, and then over here, is a, uh, a little farm that was uh, very challenging to set up, given that I'm not a redstone master. And uh, this was a moss farm. So yeah, all of the moss things got handled there. Now, if we work our way back around, we do have this. This is a relic of the server. Yeah, this is a Forge and Enchant level 24. This was from early on in the testing. This little guy right here, for some reason, likes to give those blocks. I don't know why, but they do work on crops, which is something to keep in mind. It was kind of a kind of a weird thing. Now, inside of here is where all of our villagers reside. Well, some of them aren't really alive, or all of our Kagerium stuff had been set up. And uh, I also have all of my botany pots running. These are all running to our room of the storage drawers. And then we also have set up in here Oh gosh, too much randomness going on in here. But Batania is set up and actively running as well. Um, so this allows me to convert multiple things. Uh, you can see I was you I was converting apples. Glowberries get converted into apples like so, and I was using all of that. Uh, and coal, yeah, is automating this whole process. And uh, the coal is coming from our tree farm. Yes, the create ultimate tree farm, which was probably one of the biggest projects and most effective things that we set up. Uh, so it constantly feeds a specific amount of items right here, uh, right? This one, it always keeps one inside of this storage because this can read the overall storage here. So it goes, once it has at least that, that many in there, it stops sending any more to it. And then that will make sure it constantly keeps a resupply of those specific saplings. And, uh, this farm has been fantastic. 
Uh, I did end up switching out acacia instead of oak, but I had oak there for the longest of time. And it just rotates through. All of the contraptions are hidden underground. Uh, you, you can see, you can actually place these underneath and they work so you only see the uppermost parts. And it just sends all the logs back in. And a lot of the logs get converted into charcoal and it gives me a unlimited charcoal farm as well. Now, if I was to continue on, that's my nether portal. If I was to continue on my conveyor belt journey, this takes me back up to the area that I built to kind of help loosen the lag. And this initially, before the update uh, to create, this actually shot me into the portal, which was really cool because I could just get shot up here. I didn't have flight or anything. And then I could just click my crystal and away we'd go. Uh, but building all of this out was incredibly fun. I wanted to go ahead and set up sort of areas. For example, this is our bounty area and I wanted to theme it as such. We still have like bounty crates that are over here that never got opened. I have no idea what's in them, but yeah, there's stuff there. This is where all of our processing happens. I just place my backpack when it has items in it. Uh, for example, this backpack should have items in it. Whenever I place it in here, um, I usually do this process. I grab out these and then I click on here. That will identify all of my vault gear and I'll look through and I'll go, okay, this isn't good enough. This isn't good enough. This isn't good enough. This isn't good enough. And they get sent to the scrap pile and the scrap gets turned into other useful things that we can use later. Over here's our black market. I could potentially buy some Phoenix feathers or buy like, for example, a magnet and I can identify it. These are all bought with the soul shards. And uh, like, for example, this magnet's not good enough, so it just gets trashed. Now I'm over here. Uh, this is a modular router. And this was a new addition. This gets placed on here. This pulls all my items into my refined storage system. And it, it does filter some things. Um, so there, there's a couple of, there's another modular router down here that pulls the items uh, out of this bag that can be sent to the soul harvester and that converts it into soul shards in which I can then pull out and they end up going into my shard pouch. Uh, and this is also where I keep all of my trinkets and we have every trinket but one unlocked at this point. Uh, yes, and this would be how I would normally filter all my stuff to prep for the next vault. And then I had just shown you this. This was uh, the this is the spot where all of our crystals are made. Yeah, it's pretty cool. And uh, here lately, it's been quite nice to craft all those crystals. And this is our armory. So all of my gear that I've collected that I, I would deem relatively decent has gone into this chest. This has been recently looted. Because uh, I let Abe go ahead and go through here as he came back and uh, grab what he needed. Uh, I had tons of uh, Omega stuff in here just sort of lingering about that I'm never going to use. But it would definitely be useful to somebody just now coming back. Since Abe definitely lent me a ton of stuff early on. Just to show you all of the trinkets unlocked. Every trinket but the little slimy boy I have unlocked at this point with this many hours in. Yeah, I didn't do a whole lot of gear crafting. Uh, because gear crafting to me was very expensive. And I just never got around to crafting all that much gear. Recently, though, I did craft a ton of wands uh, just because I wanted to be able to get a new reskin, uh, a new transmog, which transmogging allows you to change the look of your gear. For example, I can use last sight. I didn't even know I had this, but apparently I can use this right as my current weapon. <laughs> it's crazy. Now, I know last but not least, you're probably wondering what is all of this about? Well, I had initially built this for Zine. This was a giant bell tower. Zine is based right down there. And I built this massive bridge and this uh, this little area here. And then Zine, so that way Zine could uh, technically move in if he wanted to. But I think some things ended up happening and Zine wasn't able to continue playing for whatever reason. And yes, this right here, was a massive bell tower and it's just been this this massive structure yes yeah, so when you go up here it rings and all of that fun stuff it's just been a super fun build and all of the whole castle lining there's this massive wall on the back it was just a super fun thing to build and i've had a blast so far on the server and i am looking forward to the finale and i hope you guys are too and i really hope to see you guys there of course, Coggers also is wanting to see you there, so you better be there for Coggers. Uh, good old spinning doggo. Now, without further ado, I do want to say thank you so very much for your continued support. All of you who did support throughout this whole season, 
Thank you so very much. And I thank you guys for watching today's video. If Vault Hunters is something you're interested in, be sure to check out my Twitch, twitch.tv forward slash chosen architect. And uh, yeah, just pop on over there from time to time and just say hi. I would really appreciate it. We're definitely going to be live on Monday. So uh, join me then with our final endeavor. I hope that I'm prepared for it. And as always, guys, thanks for watching. Bye.